Now, in a few minutes, we'll talk about the connections between protests over the Dakota Access Pipeline project and New Mexico. Thousands of Native American and non-Native activists, veterans and environmentalists have traveled to Standing Rock Reservation this year to oppose construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline project. It's now on hold, as you know, but the future of the project is unclear. Some New Mexicans traveled to Standing Rock to voice their opposition to the project. Our correspondent Antonia Gonzalez, who is also the anchor of National Native News, reported from Standing Rock last week. She sits down in studio this week with some local women who also traveled to the area. Joining me today is Judy Cornelius. She lives in Albuquerque and she's Oglala, Lakota and Oneida. She traveled to Standing Rock in October. And Madison Arviso is a high school student and she's Navajo from Gallup, but thanks for being here. And also Lynette Houses is a recent New Mexico Highlands graduate who's been to Standing Rock a couple of times and she's a San Carlos and Chiricahua Apache. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, Judy, Tell me uh, why it was important for you to go to Standing Rock. Um, I, for me, it was, it's literally a seminal moment in my life because all of my life I've been raised to respect our Mother Earth and understand that we couldn't follow this nest, that we had to take good care of it. And, you know, as I watched pipelines erupt and um, leak all over the country and particularly when I saw that they moved the pipeline from north of Bismarck to south of Bismarck because the white population in Bismarck said their water supply would be threatened and it was okay if they moved it south. So I felt like it was for me a line in the sand where it was important that we stand and we particularly we stand with these incredible water protectors, um, young, old, men and women, Native and our friends who are non-native, um, it it called to me in a way that I can't even begin to describe. It pulled me there. I had to go, <laughs> and I think that's probably their experience too. Yeah. And Lynette, your experience. What what? How did you feel when you got to the camp the first time? Well, um, first and foremost, the movement is a spiritual movement. So I think that spirituality and that force of it definitely touched people from all nations and all regions. And like she said, we could feel that pull, that energy, those vibrational vibes coming there. And so when you get there, it's way different from what you see on Facebook or what's reporting in the mainstream media. It's, you can feel it. You could feel the power going into there. And it's just an amazing experience to tap into that and actually feel um, a resonating a vibrational higher level presence there of spirituality, of community, of real relationships happening and all to a beautiful focus which is protecting our mother earth and our water and our lives, our cultural survival. And so it was just totally an empowering thing to be there and to experience it at camp was amazing and beautiful. And Madison, you went with your family um, and a lot of people there at Standing Rock and people who helped organize the, the camp, but really credit the young people for helping get this movement started. And you're a young person yourself, you're 17 years old. Uh, your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's just amazing. The movement uh, started off with more young people and more young people are at the camp right now. Um, and it's brought a lot of attention to social media and stuff and I think that's the main outlet to where people see things but being at camp is a totally different thing because on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere you see the violence and everything but when you're actually there at camp you feel the love and the community and the spirituality. It's amazing. And uh, Lynette, there's also a connection with women being leaders as well as being the people who lead um, the the movement, your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's very true. Um, it goes back to our cultural roots of that women were the leaders of indigenous people across this nation. So it only goes back to tapping into that. And I saw that at camp, that women were the backbone of this movement. They're the backbone of a lot of these movements and they are our strongest leaders. I seen them stepping up in a lot of ways at camp, leading the men. The men, um, the warriors at camp took their 
their strategies from the women. They called the shots there. They held down the camp while the men, in the back of the days, the women held down the camp while the men were at war, and they're still doing that today. But this time, we're on the front lines now as well with the men. So we're definitely mm -hmm. still leading the movement, and we're still mm -hmm. strong leaders out there. Yeah, I mean, that, this is absolutely true. I come from two matrilineal tribes, and you know, the Anglo-Saxon notion of women being somehow less is just that. It's their notion, not ours. We always were equal partners in um, living our lives, maintaining our, our life, and keeping ourselves safe and spiritual has always been very balanced between men and women. So uh, I think they do play a huge role in set, helping set the tone and keeping in the place centered. Uh, but it is powerful being there. When you come into the camp, there is such an overwhelming spirituality that I have never, ever experienced anywhere else ever in my life. And even when, you know, in the early morning and the mist is rising and there are all these military vehicles sitting up there on the horizon, there is no fear. I wasn't afraid once, and I didn't think other people were afraid either. I mean, it's not that we didn't know that we could be hurt. But we weren't afraid, and that's the power of spirituality. It's a prayerful movement. We are not protesters, we're protectors. We're spiritual warriors, <laughs> you know, we're not armed. And I think that's one of the things that we're having the hardest time getting across to the, the major media and to the major public is that they're trying to pitch this as a, you know, some sort of an armed battle between two armies, and that's not what's happening at all. There is a military presence trying to stamp us out, and we're not giving up, we're not giving any ground, and we're doing it spiritually. And uh, Lynette, you, it, when you go to the camp, you see people from all over the country, all over the world, and people are connecting with this movement because maybe something back home is um, similar. They're in a similar fight. What connects New Mexico to Standing Rock for you? Oh, wow. Well, we live in the desert, so I think we know how precious water is here, especially mm -hmm. in New Mexico. Even though we're kind of a uh, far-fetched and we live in our cozy homes and you know we may have hot tubs or pools in our backyard um, we've disconnected to the importance of water but I think here in the desert we see this happening here in New Mexico with the acequias and even the jet fuel mine um, the jet fuel spill here in Albuquerque that's threatening our water um, so this very much hits home in New Mexico because we have so many water issues that we're dealing with here I've worked in the movement with uh, Save Oak Flat and our water in Arizona is San Carlos Apache and Oak Flat Campground. Our water is being threatened by a um, foreign mining company. And that's one of the last aquifers here in the desert region underneath. And so that resonated with me as far as water is important. You know, we all can connect through it because we're all made of water. When we go to the moon and or we go into space, what do we look for? The first signs of life, it's water. So we're all made of water and it should be important. It's simple. Little kids see how important it is and it resonates. So that's why it resonated for me because I do do a lot of work here in New Mexico. We, um, I work with an organization called Water Protectors of New Mexico that we established because of Standing Rock, because we saw what was happening over there and we didn't want it to happen here in New Mexico. So um, um, there's so many water issues happening here and a lot of people connect with what's happening in Standing Rock. And so it's as us, as people, as human beings, we need to be there to be able to fight for basic human rights, which is clean air, food, and water. Mm -hmm. And so why shouldn't we have feel that pull and that connection to other human beings to stand up for what they believe in and their basic human rights and to be connected to that isn't mm -hmm. too far-fetched as well. And Madison, for you, when you came back to New Mexico, what did you share with your friends and your teachers back home? Well, um, I go to a Rehoboth Christian school and all of our teachers are very, um, earthy people, I guess you could say. So they, they all knew what was going on up there and they thought it was really awesome that my family and I were going up there. Um, but before we left, we asked our church and school and stuff if they wanted to give donations and things. So they uh, brought blankets, jackets, different things like that. And so that was really awesome of them to do. Um, but just like telling them like, it's not 
violent, you don't feel the violence there at all. You feel love and everything. And I don't think it's shown as much as it should be. And I think she brings up a great point is that every time we organize, people from all generations, all nations always came out and supported us, like giving donations or just, you know, giving what they could and even prayers, you know. Um, yeah. I think that was very beautiful is that people actually came out and deno donated what they could, sent their energy in any way possible. And even if they couldn't make the trip up there, they still did something even through social media. Yeah, the, the, uh, the first uh, day I was there, there was a multi-denominational uh, group of uh, leaders from all different uh, religious persuasions who were there and walk, came into the camp and asked everybody to join a, a prayer circle. And we did, it was a great giant circle and everybody in there offered a prayer. Everybody said something and whether it was, you know, some form of Christianity or native religion or whatever, everybody there prayed and there wasn't a discordant thing in the whole camp. It was absolutely beautiful. And the contrast between that and seeing these people dressed in military equipment so they look like their bodies are like this big, um, standing up there on the on the ridges surrounding it, the contrast is just astronomical. But it doesn't deter the people in the camp. I mean, that's the most important thing is there is, it hasn't disturbed the spirit and the connection that we've got with each other and, and with the earth. I think that's the most beautiful thing. And I wanna say to this young woman, I think for me, one of the proudest, most wonderful thing was seeing young people because I've been so worried about what's happening to our nations and worried, were we, were we building leaders for the next seven generations? And I saw young people acting with honor and purpose and it's gonna set them on a path for their whole life. And I, I just think you guys are powerful and I wanna say, Tunkashala blessed us with you. So, Popila. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you for being here. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for, you for having us. us. Thank you.